Sup guys, He King here bringing you another review on Attack on Titan Season 3 Episode 4, Trust. So yeah, this week's Attack on Titan episode was a little bit action packed, but again it's mostly a talking episode so I can already see a lot of people just sort of going, oh where's the Titans, where's the fighting, where's the... Calm your horses guys, that stuff will come eventually. For now we're really digging into the uh, relationships and character development of certain characters in this show. But yeah, this episode was interesting and in terms of its themes. This episode was called pretty much Trust and it was pretty much, the main theme of this episode this week was Trust. It was about the trust and connections to various people. The, the first part obviously was the relationship that was being developed, the trust that was being developed between the uh, survey call with Levi squad along with uh, the trust with these two characters of Marlo and Hitch who are from the military police. Last week ended with these two characters, we didn't know who they were, we assumed these were just like uh, Kenny's group maybe coming into the woods to look for these guys, but no it turns out to be them and if you guys remember them they were been there since season one, they were part of a uh, uh, they were friends with Annie basically, they were sort of in the same dormitory and we kind of saw them in the first episode as well and that was pretty much it, these characters have never been really developed until now in a way. And you've got these two coming in, trying to look for the for the survey squad and then getting captured of course. But obviously you've got this moment where Levi's pretty much probably willing to kill them but you've got Hitch screaming out about all the deaths of these guys of course. Pretty much showing that uh, you know they're not like the typical military police, all the military police members we have for the most part seen have been very ruthless, have been very bad, so to speak. But these guys you can kinda of, you can you know you can tell the squad can tell these are not like the other members that they've encountered or interacted with. So there's already some level of sympathy and trust being formed in terms of the fact that okay these guys aren't so bad if they're questioning our own disastrous sort of methods that we've had to do in order to stop certain things. That and the realization when they find out that Annie is uh, was the hidden titan so that kind of breaks their spirit in a way and then of course you've got Marlo basically acting like Aaron he's sort of basically the military police version of Aaron basically and he, you know this Gene basically sort of sees that ideal coming through and for us they don't kill them because they realize that these guys aren't that bad but they can't be trusted either when they when they when Marlo says that he wants to join them and help them there is no trust there so, you know, Levi, you know, Gene decides to take it upon himself to take care of these guys, to put them away, to handcuff them, put them away, and he asks Levi to give him this opportunity. Uh, because he failed, he failed obviously, last episode he nearly got, sorry, episode 2 I believe, episode 2, he nearly got killed because he hesitated. So in a way Gene sort of has to redeem himself, and in this case he takes upon himself to test these guys, and what he does is he pretends telling them that he's going to kill them, obviously, obviously he has no intent of doing that, but uh, it's it's an attempt to see what Marlowe's and Hitch's actions will be, especially Marlowe's actions, and when he has the opportunity to, to attack and kill Gene, he doesn't do it, he decides to drop the knife, even though he's got a gun to his throat, but he decides to drop the knife and, you know, he's willing to die for his own beliefs and not to kill these guys, because he does believe they are the good guys, they are trying to do what is right for the walls, and that for us makes Gene realise, yeah, these guys can be trusted, there was an opportunity there for them to attack, to kill, Marlo himself realises he was being tested, it's all good, you get a little funny moment of Hitch slapping Gene in the head with, with a tree bark, but it all turns out right and these guys end up helping the survey call to find these uh, other interior, I believe interior or military police squad members in this Pacific area, so they find them and they attack them and they capture the leader of this settlement, this group, uh, the squad, uh, and they basically interrogate him to get information to the whereabouts of Aaron and his story. And this guy pretty much says that he has no idea where these, where, where they are. So they they have no information there, which is kind of like, oh crap. Well, what's what's going on? What's going to happen next? And of course, the episode ends with uh, some sort of encounter happening again, like they're getting found out by a certain group of people, again we don't know who it is, obviously we'll find out next time so if you read the manga you know what's happening. The next aspect of the trust storyline is to do with Hanji and her relationship with uh, Fagel Reeves, Demas, was it Reeves or Demas Reeves, Reeves, it was Reeves, 
Demas Reese was killed in episode at the end of episode two, I believe. So, and uh, the, the murder has been put to blame on Owen Smith. So you've got Fergal, who's the only one who sort of witnessed the murder of his father running for his life from the military police, from the interior police, and he gets rescued by Hunchy in a Batman Begins style moment. Like seriously, that was straight up from something from Batman Begins, like with Hunch swooping down, sort of like Jason Moore style from Batman style, just grabbing Fergal and pulling him up and escaping, like such a cool moment. And you've got You've got her basically putting two to two together and figuring figuring out what's happening and telling Fergal to to trust her to, to help them sort of fix this entire mess. And she gives an awesome little quote here where like Fergal's like, You guys, you know, you you've lost already and Hanji pretty much saying like, Well, you know, that's 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 pretty much what we do. We we always we we always lose or something like that. So it's kind of a cool moment there to see that even though they lose all the time, they're still fighting for hope, still fighting for justice, they're still fighting for the the good side basically. So yeah, they she gets Fergal on her team and we get this, uh, in a way this episode does have one flaw I admit, which is different from the manga and it, it really did disappoint me we didn't get this moment. We do get introduced to the uh, newspaper crew, you've got these two characters that we get introduced to who are from the newspaper side of things, of the, of the town or of that specific part of the city, of the walls. And uh, there's a moment in the manga where Hanji basically, you know, she confronts these two and one of them is this rookie, he's this new staff member and he, he wants, he's the kind of guy who wants the truth to be told and you've got his mentor sort of saying you can't do that because, you know, the military police, the king, whatever, they control everything and if, if, we, if we post this stuff, if we spread this news, it will be bad for our families and we'll get killed for it and you've got Hanji coming in and telling them, convincing them that they, you know, it's up to them, they have to make a choice for what's right or what's wrong and she gives them that choice and eventually these guys decide to do what's right and team up with Hanji and the survey call to spread that truthful message and we don't get that moment unless it's something we're going to see in a flashback maybe in the next episode or two which I hope we do because it's an aspect of the story I did like yes it sort of uh, made uh, the, the uprising arc go a bit slow but I always felt those human moments in that arc were very necessary in terms of showing you the mindset of all the various people because the uprising arc for the most part is very historical and very Levi focused yes and Nero doesn't get his moments until the very end of that arc but before that the whole beginning stuff is really to do with the people the people of the walls and they're, they're sort of getting their moments to show me kind of seeing the relationship of, of the public siding, beginning to truly side with the survey corps and swayed away from the influence of the king and the military police and we we kind of get that here but it feels very very rushed which is very disappointing but we do get this cool moment where again Fogel's being chased and he runs into this sort of ruined part and he's about to be killed by these three guys who are relieved to finally find him and call him because that you know that one of them even says like that he was scared they were gonna he was gonna get killed if they didn't find Fogel and kill him and as they're about to kill Fergal, Fergal manages to get these guys to admit to killing his father and who it was that did it and that it was the interior police and obviously by orders of the king, obviously. And surprisingly, he, it's all a setup and a trick because uh, the three guys, three military police members, they realise that they've been eavesdropped by the townspeople that are living in the ruins still. And you've got the survey call members, you've got Hunchy and Morbord uh, jumping in. And there's the newspaper guys as well who've just heard everything, so obviously they're going to be writing about it. But yeah, you've got this cool little mini action sequence where Hanji and Morbid come in and they kick these guys' asses. And there's a straight up awesome moment where this one dude is about to blast Hanji in the face. And she just dodges, such moves her head very fast out of the, out of the shot, like boom. And yeah, yeah, it was just such a cool moment of her just kicking their butts. But yeah, it's just. It's little moments like that that make these episodes really, really cool. You've got these little cool mini action moments. So yeah, that was definitely worth it. And uh, it makes the episode stand out as a whole. And again, it enforces the theme of trust. The other uh, other theme of trust is between Erwin Smith and Niles. You know, Erwin is pretty much being interrogated and he's being beaten to a pulp. And you've got uh, Niles, who's, I think, I believe he's the leader of the military police. He comes in and he pretty much t straight up tells you know, Erwin that he's, you know, he's gonna get some form of chance before he's, maybe before he's executed and that he's gonna be taken to the king. And you've got Erwin pretty much telling Niles like, you know, how his family is, how his wife Maria and his kids are, and Niles saying he hasn't seen them in a while but they're safe. But there's obviously a point that Erwin is making there, which is that, you know, are you are you willing to sacrifice, 
it's something that's not made very clear, but he Elwood pretty much tells Niles that he's he's had words with Pixers and that something is going to happen. And when that something happens, Niles is going to have to make a choice. And it's pretty obvious that choice is pretty much a case of are you willing to die for for your beliefs, for the king, for the military police, and all that, or and to sacrifice your family, or are you going to do what's right to protect them? protect all of us that's sort of what everyone is getting at we don't know exactly what's going to happen again if you read the monk you know what's going to happen what this big ploy is that everyone is setting in motion because he hasn't lost yet there is something obviously going on even though he's getting his ass beaten he's still sort of a step ahead but yeah he gets taken towards the king to, to the king to all the big up the higher ups basically and uh, uh, you know Niles is there and obviously Pixar might be playing a role here as well so that's that's pretty much being set up for next episode so we're gonna see what happens then and I believe that's pretty much oh oh we do get one bit of information uh, we found out I think episode one or two that uh, it was episode three that Levi is called Levi Ackerman in this episode we find out that Kenny is an Ackerman as well and you got this moment where Levi hears that from the guy he's interrogating and Mika sighs behind him hearing that as well so at this point you've got Mikasa now realizing holy crap this 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 dude is, is an Ackerman and she probably knows Levi is an Ackerman as well so it's curious to see how this relationship between them two and this this dude that's pretty much going off of them trying to kill them is going to be formed but yeah overall very very good episode not very, very light on the action very light on the action and heavy on the talking but uh, and the political side but it's necessary not to stand to see where all the pieces and figures are because in a way it is all pretty much like a chess game so yeah it is like a chess game basically each character is sort of doing their own bit to get things sorted you've got Hanji pretty much trying to basically form trust with the public in order to get to a point where they can make people realise that the military police and the king and that are all chatting shit to get them on their side. You've got Erwin, who's now in the inside, getting his ass beat and handed to him, still playing his own role, still playing his own game. So obviously he's got some cards up his own sleeve that he's not revealed yet, but there's obviously something going on. And then of course on the other side, you've got Levi's group doing what they can to find Erwin in his story and finding out little bits of information here and there and them trying to survive before they're found out and killed. Hopefully not, but that's how it is. But yeah, overall, very decent episode. Definitely got me hyped. It also, like I said, it does develop the characters. Gene definitely got his moment to sort of shine here, to sort of redeem himself. He didn't kill anyone, he didn't have to kill anyone. He basically just played a role in order to see if he could, you know, make sure these guys can be trusted and get them on their side, on their team, and that did happen. So, you know, good on him for that. And same with Hanji and her relationship in terms of getting Fergal on her side and Fergal himself. He's not he's not the biggest developed character, but it is awesome to see this this kid from this first episode sort of go from this grouchy sport brand to this kid who takes charge and responsibility for the people that used to follow his dad and him taking responsibility about saying that he's gonna be the boss now and protect these people and this district and taking over his own father's dreams basically. In a way, <clears throat> this the uprising arc as a whole in a way is its main theme is not just trust as this episode showed but also uh, parents or father figures in a way you've got Erwin doing what he's doing because of what happened to his dad you've got uh, you know you've got him trying to convince Niles who's a father and a husband to do what is right You've got Fergal doing what he's doing because of how it happened to his own dad and him trying to you know follow in his footsteps in a good way. You've got Aaron, which we haven't found out yet, obviously, but there's obviously something there that involves his dad, obviously, as we've seen in the opening, that's probably going to play a role. So we have yet to see that, and obviously his story and the relationship with her father, and then of course Levi and his relationship with his father figure, uh, Kenny, who obviously you know raised him and taught him all the tricks and stuff that he knows. So obviously there's, there's a lot of uh, daddy issues to do with this particular season, and we're obviously going to see how that all rubs up by the end of it but yeah uh, overall cool episode I liked it I'm enjoying season 3 so far there's obviously the obviously the structure and pacing of certain things from the manga being cut or moved up is, is being done to give it that bit of speed and better pacing than the manga did but I am disappointed that it seems a lot of stuff is getting cut I would have liked to have seen the, the news uh, 
uh, the newspaper stuff from the manga, I would have liked to have seen uh, the stuff of his story talking to the survey calls, talking to Levi Scott about our history and our past. Uh, I would have preferred, like, to have seen Eren remembering um, the new, Le you know, the old Levi Squad and comparing to the new one, which which would have been in episode one, but we didn't get that, obviously. So that was sort of cut and short. Um, little moments like that. Um, I'm still hoping we get those moments, maybe, and maybe they've been rearranged. But uh, I'm not holding my breath at this point because it does feel like this whole first half of the uprising arc is an attempt to just get through all the boring talking elements and just get to, to a fast point so we can get to the action which I imagine is going to be happening at the halfway point around episode 6 or 7 so yeah overall cool episode can't wait for the rest uh, season 3 is obviously going in a good way as it should could be better but uh, it's not bad by any means uh, it is pointing it is getting to all the important stuff basically but yeah that's what it is Anyway guys, hope you like my review on this, as always like and subscribe, whatever, and I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and...